I just got access to Manus AI a few days ago. For those of you who don't know, Manus AI is a AI agent that can control a computer, browse the web, and pretty much do any task you can think of that can be done on a computer for the most part. If you go to Manus's website, you can see different use cases that you can click on, and you can see a replay of the chat and the live feed of what Manus's computer was, was showing at that time. So if you go to my tab here, you can see that I've used Manus for three different applications in the past few days. And I'll talk a little bit about two of them because really the third one is very similar to one of the other ones. And the two main tasks that I've asked it to work on are one, making a research review or a literature review for the field of research that I did my PhD in, which is a task that I've given to other models that have sort of deep research capabilities. I'm talking about Gemini Advanced Deep Research, Perplexity Deep Research, as well as the OpenAI Deep Research model. And so I wanted to see how Manus stacked up with those other researching models as, uh, as a researcher, even though it is more broad in the sense that Manus can do more things than just research. I also asked it to convert an old software program that's in another language into Python. This is the software that I wanted it to recreate in Python, this program known as ATV. This is actually written by my PhD advisor when he was a graduate student, which is crazy if you ask me. But if you look at the source code here, it's like 12,000 or so lines. And I wanted to see if Manus could take this code in a different language and essentially port it over to Python. Those of you who remember, I actually asked OpenAI's O1 preview model to do this about six months ago, and I'll talk about how it did. So let's go back and talk a little bit about the first task, which was the research review. So I asked Manus again to write a research review. The prompt that I gave Manus AI for the research review was a prompt that I had ChatGPT four and a half help me write. So effectively, I had a plan already of what I wanted it to do, but I wanted to give Manus a prompt that was clear, very understandable, and in a way that it could take my instructions and go ahead and perform the task without that much of a problem. So I gave an outline of my prompt to ChatGPT 4.5, and, and I said, hey, I'm going to prompt an AI agent. Please take these thoughts that I have and come up with a prompt to prompt this AI agent to do the tasks that I wanted to do. And this was the prompt. That's a pretty good prompt. And I think it's pretty clear as to what I wanted it to do. I wanted to do a literature search. I wanted to collect some data and put it into a spreadsheet. I wanted to make a simple plot. And then I wanted to write a bit of a report. Okay, so it's a very, I think, a simple task that you would probably expect a college or graduate student to do basically without a problem. They would just take a lot of time, and this could save a lot of time. And so Manus went off and did its thing. So we can take a look and scroll through the different clips here. But you can see it searching on uh, the ADS astrophysics uh, data system, which is a popular site to find papers. You can see it making this CSV with this references. And it's basically trying to find all the different relevant papers, going through archive, going through other journal websites, and it's finding my papers, which is kind of funny. But the thing that I noticed about it, as well as the other AI sort of deep research models, is that none of these models can seem to get the comprehensive list. And what I mean by that is that if you take a look at the uh, final report that they come up with, they always just stop short of finding all of the relevant sources. Like I asked it to find all the relevant sources since 2015. It says it could only find seven, but I know for a fact there's more than seven. And again, with Gemini Deep Research, you can see that it's a bit more comprehensive. But another thing that I found interesting as well is that they don't always get these reported values correct in the tables they create. In fact, Manus in its table got a few details incorrect in terms of the, the parameters in this table it made here. So that was kind of interesting, if not uh, maybe a little bit disappointing that one, it's not comprehensive enough, and two, even when it tries to retrieve the information, it doesn't do a perfect job at it. And it did make a plot. The plot doesn't really look that great because it's not well populated because it's missing a lot of data points. But nevertheless, 
a lot of the things that it writes in terms of the scientific information it's providing is accurate, but again, incomplete. And so that's a little bit disappointing, but it does give pretty good interpretations of what it does find. And I think that if the retrieval was just a little bit better, this could really automate the literature review process. Now, if these AI models, whether it's Manus or it's D Gemini, Deep Research, Perplexity, OpenAI, Deep Research, if these models were really, really intelligent, what they could do is try and find my dissertation and just go to the back of the dissertation and find the list of all the references I was expecting them to find. Because I asked this question to all of the different LLMs that have reasoning, this question of making a literature review with all the comprehensive sources, because I did that and I know what the sources are of what they should be citing. And every time they do it, they just never make a list as comprehensive as this. And so that's one thing I'm still looking forward to in terms of models that can really retrieve information in a comprehensive manner and not leave a lot of uh, data points missing, which it doesn't matter if it was OpenAI's model, Google's, Manus, Perplexity, they all seem to, to fall a little bit short in terms of finding all the sources when I'm asking them to do a proper comprehensive literature review. So don't want to belabor the point too much. Overall, I'd say on this task that it failed for the most part because it only found four references out of, I was expecting around 30. But uh, in terms of the sources that it did find, it did do what I wanted to do. So you know, take it with a grain of salt. If it was better at retrieving information, I'm sure it could have made a report that talked about the sample as a whole and found all the different patterns and trends, but it didn't do that. But not trying to be too harsh, but that's just how I saw it after this task was done. Okay, let's talk about the second task that I asked it to do. The second task that I asked Manus to do was to recreate a software program known as ATV in Python. Now, ATV is this program that my PhD advisor wrote when he was a grad student. And I mean, that's just crazy. <laughs> I don't know how he did that, but he did. But it's in this language known as IDL. It's a closed source environment. And I've for a while thought about how nice it would be if this program could be ported to Python. Now, some viewers of my channel may remember that I actually did give this prompt this task of converting ATV from IDL to Python to open AI preview back in like September. And this is the result it came up with. I made a whole video about that. But how did Manus compare with the open AI version? Well, if we go to the chat here, you'll notice that this chat is actually quite long because Manus kept giving me versions of the program that just would not work. And I always had to keep giving it back in terms of saying, hey, I tried to follow your instructions. You know, I read the readme, I read the markdown. But every time I try and set up the ATV environment on Python, it just completely crashes. And so I kept having to give it back. And it was kind of funny because if you go to Manus's zip files it would always give me. It starts here. It, it, it would say things like, you know, pi ATV cross platform, pi ATV, you know, package, fixed, fixed to, final, verified. I would always ask it to be like, hey, you know, this is wrong. Please, you know, fix it again. And it keeps sending me updated zip files. So when you ask it to do a coding task like this, it'll often uh, give you all the files in the form of a zip. It has, it writes all these scripts. In, in Python like I asked it to, but it could just never get it to run properly because I would always try and start it on my own laptop and I would always just crash when I try to open the software in terms of it has a, an executable binary and I just I couldn't just click it and open. So that was really annoying. And the one thing that I found to be really funny was that I talked to someone today about having this issue with AIs and coding and when they when they just seem to over engineer the problem where they they give you something like this where there's so many just dependencies and it's a really you know complex system. I got to the point where I was like this is just too much to debug. It just it just couldn't seem to fix all of the problems. You can see here I'm asking, hey, you know, when I try to launch it, I get this error, you know, can you please, you know, fix it? 
And then it says, oh yeah, I understand that you have this error. You can see here, this is one of the times where I said, hey, you know, I couldn't get this thing to work when I tried to launch it on my computer, refine the code to make sure that the executable is, is openable on my computer here. And it says, okay, understand, let me try and fix it. And then we kind of just kept going back and forth where it gives me these instructions where I could run the Python uh, setup, but whenever I tried to launch, it would just crash. And I kept saying, oh, you know, here's the error message. It doesn't seem to work. And it says, thank you for providing the error message. This is the reason why, let me fix that. It would fix it supposedly. And then I would come back and say, hey, there's still uh, another error. And we kept going back and forth and back and forth. And eventually it got to the point where I just said, okay, forget it. Like, it's just, it seems like this is just too interconnected, too interdependent that I cannot seem to work with it. But I did talk to someone today about, hey, when you have an issue with LLMs like this that are trying to code something for you, what you should do is say, hey, come up with the Goldilocks solution. Don't over-engineer it. Make something that you can easily verify that it works and it's not too complicated. So this is how I phrased it here. I just said, oh yeah, it seems to fail because of the complex dependencies. Uh, it's over-engineered. Find the balanced Goldilocks solution that simplifies these dependencies without sacrificing essential functionality. And only after this was I actually able to get it to work here. So this was the last time I prompted it. It gave me some instructions here as to how to do it. So I'm going to run python setup.py, like it says here. So it's able to install all the, the different dependencies. And it just says launch. I think I just do launch pyatv.sh. And OK, so it does end up bringing up this graphical user interface. How good is it actually in terms of reading FITS files? Those are the standard astronomy files. Well, OK, so I try to put in this mask file. And OK, it looks pretty good for the most part. In terms of what my PhD advisor software can do, it can do a lot more than what this you know, very bare bones program does. You can change the <laughs> color map, but you, every time I change it, the, there ends up being a new color bar and I never figured out how do you how do you get rid of this. Uh, I can't seem to go back, even though it says I should be able to go back. You can change the scaling of the, the image. So I have the log scale, square root. It's getting smaller and smaller every time that I, I try and do something. So if you do zoom to fit, I uh, can't seem to zoom. Can I center? I guess not. Auto scale. Okay, I guess that did something. So as you can see here, it's not the most intuitive and it's kind of buggy, I would say, but at least it opened up and ran in the sense that it was something that I couldn't even do in the earlier versions. I found it funny too, just the naming convention of the of the packages in the sense that it would say, you know, fixed, fixed to, final, verified. It's kind of the way I feel like I would name my my files, uh, you know, final, really final. It's final for real this time. OMG, please let this be the last time kind of, you know, naming convention. So, okay, so Manus AI didn't quite get it. How did the Manus Goldilocks solution compare with ChatGPT01 Preview's version from about six months ago? So I went ahead and took the response from 01 Preview, which is all the way down here. And let's just remind ourselves how that looked like. So I believe I just do Python, Python TV, Py. And this was the O1 preview solution. Okay, so maybe not as many features as the as the Manus version. But if we go ahead and maybe find a file like this to look at again, so I can actually, you know, pen, I can, uh, can I change a color bar here? There's no real color bar here, actually. Can I? Change the map. I can change the map. Okay, but I don't. I don't actually see the values of it. Can I change the, the stretch? I don't really see how the stretch can change because I can't see anything. Seven oh four, fifteen twenty one, and a ten aperture radius, and the sum is actually three seventy. Okay, that's reasonable because all this is actually one value. So, I would say minus the fact that I can't see anything on this uh, color bar. There's no color bar scale here. I would argue that the O1 preview version has a bit more functionality to it and is just more intuitive, I think, as a viewer. Um, ultimately, again, I want it to be better than this. You know, I'd hope an AI agent one day can make something better than 
what either O1 Preview or Manus was able to come up with. But nevertheless, I think overall my initial impressions with Manus are that I think it has a lot of potential and I obviously haven't tried that many things to do with it yet. So I'm still coming up with use cases and I'm kind of burning through my credits quickly so I can't be too exploratory with it. But nevertheless, good start. I think I think it rightfully shocked a lot of people what it could do. The use cases speak for itself, though I think we have to uh, acknowledge the fact that when it comes to like retrieval and doing literature review research, it's missing out on some of the comprehensive parts of it. The Python stuff, maybe not the best software engineer quite yet in the sense of building things that are just not uh, launching on the first on the first try, but. Overall, I'm excited to keep playing with it and other AI agents that come out. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope it gave you a sense as to what Manus can do for you. And again, I'll be sharing the, the chat as well as the replay that you can watch and see for yourself in more detail if you want to pause and, and see things that it did during my sessions. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope um, you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.